So this is the review for the Calc 2 review sheet. We'll do the Calc 1 another day. But let's start off. Here's your calculator. The first thing I want you to do on your calculator is make sure that your table set is correct. So turn your calculator on. And you're going to go to see above window where it says in blue. Yay. Okay. very simple linear equation, 5x minus 3, and you're going to go to y equals in your calculator. If I hit y equals, it should be empty, which it is, right? So you're going to type in 5x minus 3. So here's your 5. Your x is right here on this button. Don't use any other variable than x because your calculator won't understand that you've named the x axis b because it thinks it's x, and then minus 3. There's a difference between the minus button and that negative button. So don't use the negative button unless it's very negative. Okay. Then you're going to hit graph. And it should be a line that's just like that. If there's anything different, you need to let me know. Are we all good to go? Okay. So we're going to sketch this. In order to sketch this, they are asking us, now it's going to be a little difficult to sketch. Notice that your viewing window is 10 hash marks up, 10 hash marks down, 10 to the right and 10 to the left. It can be really hard to fit that in here so because the box is so tiny, because this is supposed to represent your viewing window. So you're going to put in your x and y axis. But they want to know what are your zeros. And we're also going to find our uh, y-intercept. So what is a zero of a graph? What does that mean? Where the graph crosses the x-axis, right? Where the y value is zero. So that would be the zero. You're not going to guess. We can actually calculate exactly what it is. And see the menu up here above the trace menu that says help? To get to that menu, you have to hit the blue second function key. So hit second. You see a little arrow up here. And then you can hit trace. And you have all these choices where we're finding the zero. So you can either scroll down with your, your scroll key here to two, or you can just type in two, and it'll take you directly to how to calc it. Now it's asking you for left bound. If I'm calculating this point here, see you should have a flashing dot here. You want that flashing dot to be to the left of that zero. To the left can either be below or above the x-axis. In this case, because I have a positively sloped line, to the left is below. So you want to just go ahead and keep it there, hit enter. It puts a little arrow here as a marker. Then it's asking you for right bound. You have to physically move this flashing thing to the right. So use the right cursor till you get above the zero, which means it's to the right. Anywhere above that zero. I like to stay as close to the zero as I can, but not too close. So you don't want to confuse the calculator. If you get it too close, then it, then it confuses it because it might not realize that you're not above the x-axis. So don't get too close. But don't get too far because then you tend to get wrong results. Um, so hit enter and then it's asking you to guess. You want it to guess. You want it to do the work. And there it guesses. 0.6 times 0. 
key point is that y should have a value of zero because that's your proper value of zero. Uh, just hit enter. Did it work? Yep, there you go. So then you want to write down here zero. And write it as an order of pair, 0 0.6 comma zero. Now where's the y-intercept? On the y-axis, what's the value of x on the y-axis? Zero. And because this is uh, y equals mx plus b, you ought to be able to tell that the y-intercept is negative three, but on your table, you can actually find your y-intercept quite easily. So go to your table, which is above graph. You want to hit second function, hit the graph button, and it brings you to the table, which should be blank. But because we fixed our table set, you ought to be able to input zero for the x value, and it should spit out negative three for y. Did it? Okay, so that's our y intercept. So that's the only thing that I need, so I'm going to go back to graph, so just hit graph. That's the only thing I need to graph this, so I'm going to put some hash marks in here. So I've got one, two, I've got three negative 3 on the y-axis, and really close between 1 and 2. And then use a straight edge to make the sketch. And that's it. That's all you have to do for that. Then we have another three. My, well, that's just because it ended up with my, my point is actually between 0 and 1. It's really hard to get two between 1 and 10. But I quite clearly have written my 0 over here as 1. But it started out that way. Alright, so now we're going to put in number 3. So you want to go back to the y equals menu. And you want to clear that out. So just hit this clear button, which is below your cursors. So hit clear, and it should be completely gone. Now here's where the difference comes into play. You've got x squared. When you put things with exponents into the um, school bus yellow calculator, they can look different. I'll tell you why. Because if I put the x in here, here's your x, you have a choice. You can either hit the x squared button here, which if I were you, I would, or you can always use what's called a caret, this upside down v, to raise things to an exponent. If I use the caret, my calculator automatically raises it to an exponent of 2. And I have to get out of it. Your calculator is going to look different. Uh, and I'll show you what that looks like here. Alright, so if you use the carrot, see how that looks different on the school bus calculator than mine? So that carrot is just saying that the x is very similar. It's the same thing. But on the school bus, if you do use the x squared button, now it shows it looking like an actual exponent. So that's the only time the school bus yellow calculator that the exponent will look proper when you use that x squared. And then hit graph. So when I hit graph, where's the zeros? So there are no zeros. Where's the y-intercept? Three. Verify it. Where? Second graph will get you to table, and you already have zero inputted from before. Notice that y is positive three. So that's all we have to do to sketch it. That's the only important place that it crosses is the y-axis at three. So that's what that one looks like. So number five is a little bit more interesting. You ready to input that one? So let's go back to y equals, hit clear, and we're going to input 2x cubed. 2x, you have no choice but to use the carrot button. So 
carrot. Mine makes it look like an exponent. Yours is going to show the carrot on the school bus yellow cube. Plus 3x squared minus 12x. should look like a sideways S. How many zeros are on this one? Three zeros this time, right? So here's your zeros. We're going to find all three. My suggestion would be that you start with the leftmost zero and work your way to the right. Swap it out for another one. <laughs> Hopefully you're lucky. Because <laughs> two of those are completely dead. All right, so we're going to go to second calc, and we want to choose zero, so choose two. And it's currently flashing at the origin at zero, zero. If I were you, I would scroll left, keep scrolling until you get left bound to the leftmost zero. So here's my cursor. I want to get left bound, which means that in this case I have to be below. Because below is to the left, above would be actually to the right at that point. So I want to keep going to line below. You don't want to get too far away because there's a lot of curves here. You don't, I mean, that's as close as I can get. So I'm going to hit enter for my left down. Then I'm going to scroll to the right. Gets me far enough away. Hit enter again, and then enter again for the third time for your guess. So everybody should have a guess of negative three point, and we're going to round two decimal places, three, one, comma, zero. If you don't, come see me. Uh, left down, right down, and yes. So I'll do it again. So second, out, hit two for zero, and you want to scroll until you are below that um, the x axis at this point. And then it's looking for left, so hit enter. Then it wants right down, so you have to scroll until you're up. Hit enter, and then hit enter one more time. All right, so now find the second zero. Do the whole process again. Second calc, find zero, so hit two. It's now flashing down here. You want to scroll to the right until it gets close to the origin, but not on it. It takes a while, it has a very tall curve there. So this time left down is above the x-axis, because that would be to the left of that point. So hit zero, but don't be too far away. Oh, sorry, hit enter. Then it wants right bound, so scroll to the right. That would be on the point, so I'm going to scroll this a little bit further to enter. And enter again, which way? Zero, zero. So the origin should be one of our zeros. And then for the rightmost zero, second help, zero. Scroll until you get, and you don't want to stay here because there's a curve here. You have to be really careful. You keep scrolling until you're past that curve and as close to under that x-axis, but not too close. So that, that'll work. So left down, hit enter. And then right, hit enter. And yes. So you should have one point, rounding to two places, eight, one, comma, zero. Now, where's the y-intercept? It's also at zero, zero. So the zero and the y-intercept are the same. You don't have to find that. The only, thing, the only other thing I want to show you how to find is what are called relative max and min. You see how there's this curve here? It's called a relative minimum. It's like the vertex in a parabola. It's not really the minimum because this goes infinitely negative here, but this is what we call a relative minimum, which will explore a whole lot more as we get along in pre -top. But your calculator will calculate that. Up here, there must be a curve that goes up, right, and comes back down. That's called the relative maximum. We could find that, but it's out of our viewing window, so we're going to ignore that this time for this exercise. So go into your calc menu. So hit second calc. You see we have choices of minimum and maximum. I want minimum because I'm finding a relative minimum. So I'm going to select three or scroll down. And here's what my minimum is. It's asking for left down, so I want to get this uh, flashing cursor to the left and as close to that minimum as possible, but I don't want to be on it. So I don't want to choose this. Or even that. That might even still be a little too close. I'm going to choose just a little further away. But again, not too far away. 
a little fine dance that we play. So hit enter for left down. Then you want to scroll to the right to go past that point. You don't want to get too close, but not too far. Hit enter again for right down, and then yes. That's pretty darn close to the order pair one, negative seven, isn't it? So that's what our, that's what my minimum is going to be. Uh, one, negative seven. And so now I'm ready to sketch this. It's going to be hard to squeeze in that negative seven, but you're going to do your best. Putting all these zeros, sending them to left to move through. Oops, that went to one. Zero, zero. And almost to two. And then one negative seven. And so to show that relative max that we're missing, I'm just going to put a break in there. And it's going to come back down, curve, and go back up. And it goes back down. And the arrows belong on the right and left side. And so that's a sketch of what we see there. So now you've been introduced to finding the zeros, the y-intercepts, and relative max and min. So if you go down to number nine, we're going to look at um, sketching systems and finding intersections and that kind of thing. Are you ready for that? All right, so let's go back to y equals. You want to clear that out. This time we're going to do number nine. We're going to put in two equations. So we're going to use the y sub one and the y sub two. So when I put in this one, I've got two x minus seven. But then scroll down to y sub two. And when you put in the one half, you have to use parentheses. Especially in the school bus yellow calculators, it gets confused as to what the coefficient is if you don't use parentheses. So parentheses, one divided by two, and parentheses. Then you can put in the x, and then the plus one. So make sure that you use those parentheses. Now when you hit graph, you get a very interesting looking graph. <coughs> Bless you. And isn't the intersection of those two lines the solution to the system? Right? So. I want, to, I want to find my zeros of these lines, I want to find the y-intercepts, and I want to find that intersection. The directions are asking for um, just to find the solution, but if I'm going to sketch, I want to find all of that. So let's find the intersection first before I put in my x and y axis. So again, we can use that top menu. Let's get rid of it. Okay, bring your calculator up here. Let's see what you put into the y equals, because it could be an interesting this is what I put into y equals. You want to use parentheses around one time. Yeah. Interesting. Why does it show a negative one? Well, we're going to figure that one down. So you shouldn't have a negative one. Oh, did you use an, this negative down here? No. No? Okay. So 2x. Um, okay. Bless you. No, I'm saying it's negative. No, you're right. Yeah, you're right. I don't know what you did, but it was me. Now it's right. <laughs> right. All right, so does everybody have this? Okay. So we're going to find the intersection right here. So go to second calc. See how we have a choice of intersect. So we are going to do five. And it wants first curve, because there's uh, two curves on here. So if I were you, and it's already scrolling out, or flashing on one of the curves, but I would usually need to scroll this up so it's close to the intersection. The closer this to the intersection, the better the guess of the calculator is. And as 
especially if you have a curved line, which we'll do in a minute, um, you really need to be close. I'm going to keep scrolling to the right. Don't get too close to the intersection yet. I like don't have a function. Okay, then you didn't choose intersection. Like, it, has, it wasn't there for us. Let me see. It's probably, it's probably back here. See this right here? I'll bet you that's it. Oh, it's at negative one. So it's, yeah, it's way down there. It, it was hiding down there. So now there it is. If you look right here, it'll kind of tell you where the X is as far as where it's at. So it probably went from wherever you had it in the previous problem. Did anybody else have that problem? All right, so I got it close. So that is my first curve. So I hit enter. Then it automatically goes on to the next line. And it's flashing, and it says second curve, and that's a good placement. So I'm going to accept that as my second curve, and now hit enter again for your guess. So also three entries again. So round to two decimal places, our intersection, or our solution, is uh, 7.33, 7.67. And then I want to find my zeros. So my zeros for this one, second calc, two for zero. Um, if I go left, it's on the wrong curve. If I want to jump curves, when I have more than one line, you have to go up and down. So if I click on the up button, now it's on the curve that I want, and now I can scroll to the left and get left down at that leftmost zero. It's non left. And I'm going to So I've got negative eight zero. And then second calc again. Zero. And my uh, flashing point was high so I had to keep scrolling right until I found it and happened to be on this line. So I keep scrolling until you find it. Enter. Enter. So this one's 3.50. Alright, so I And then we can tell the wider sets are about the point graphs, So now we can finish. So that's as close as you can get for that one. So that's pretty good. I had to go a little off the viewing window, which is fine. Yes. Let me see what you got. Let's see what you got. Okay. You're trying yeah. to find the intersection? Yeah. You see it? Okay, so you don't want to go too far away. Should say first four seconds. My guess is you're using the wrong thing. So go to second cal. If I'm going to do intersection, using intersection. Oh, okay. Are you going to zero this one? This one? 
Oh, are you doing the Y intercept? Are you doing the Y intercept here or here? Oh, here, then you want to go to the table. So go to the second table. And see how for your first line, the Y intercept is negative 7. The second line is positive here. So you have the Y intercept on the Y axis. You're going to the for the X axis, that's where you can use this one. Does that make sense? All right, is everybody good with that one? Yes? Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's your solution. Yes. 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 On these ones, yeah. Yeah. Okay, are we good? Are we good? Are we good? <laughs> one more. I have really good questions. How many digits is that? Pi itself or that? Pi is in here. Yeah. All right, um, then let's do this one because this one's a curve. And then we're going to look at the linear regression on the back. So this one's a curve. So go into y equals and clear out both of the equations. You have to scroll down to clear out the second one. Everybody clear? Clear the take off. All right, so put in x cubed, x caret 3. you got to use the caret for x cubed. Minus 3x. That sounds like a whole lot more effort, but you could. <laughs> Good, it'll probably look nice when we double it. Um, and then plus 2. And then we've got x plus 2. And so then hit graph. So there's the first one, and there's the second. So how many places does the line intersect the curve? Three. Three places. So there's three solutions. So we have to find all three. So here's your solutions. So we're going to start at the left. You have to be careful because remember when you do intersect, it's first curve, second curve. And get it close to the intersection. So I'm going to hit second calc, intersect, so number five. And currently it's flashing right here. I'm going to get it over here. So let's scroll to see what it's on. So it's on the curve. So I'm going to keep scrolling until I'm definitely on the curve, but right below here. So I'm going to hit enter. And now it's got on the line, but it's a little too close to the intersection for my piece of mind. So I'm going to move it off the intersection just a little bit. And then hit enter. And now it wants to guess. So now I hit enter again. And it is definitely on that intersection. And it's a negative 2, positive 0, which happens to be 0 also. So negative 2, 0. To know. And then the next intersection, you're going to hit second call, intersect, so number five. And it says first curve, so I'm going to scroll to see where it's at. It's on the curve again, but scroll past the hump in the curve. Right here, so scroll here, so it's between the hump and the intersection. And hit enter. So now it should be on the line. I'm going to move it just a little off that line. I don't want to, I don't want to be too close to the intersection. Hit enter and enter a third time. So this is an interesting answer. It's 1.511e negative 14. That means 1.511 times 10 to the negative 14. Isn't that awfully very close to zero? That's scientific notation, right? So sometimes when you're doing an intersection when it's so tiny like that, we're just gonna say that's zero too. And if you think about it, on the line, in the zero two, go to your table, just to prove to you. What happens if the x value is zero? Aren't both of the lines have a value for y of two? So sometimes your calculator calculates it not quite exactly at zero because it's doing an estimate with this function. So I definitely know that one of my solutions is zero two. Not that funky scientific notation. And then find your last intersection, which is up here. So the second half, number five for intercept. Scroll closer on the curve to that intersection. Go between that home from the intersection. Hit enter. And it's on the line. I want to move it to the right side of the intersection. I don't want my calculator confused. Hit enter. And then enter a third time. So we have some nice intersections, two to four. One of the things I need to make sure of are we have this relative max and relative min again. So I'm going to show you how to do those. Again, 
I want to find out where the highest point of that curve is and where the lowest point of is. So we're going to calculate this maximum. Maximum meaning that it's the highest it can go. So we're going to do the second cal. I'm going to choose maximum. So scroll to the left because they want left down. So I want to get to the left of that maximum. Go to the left, hit enter. Scroll to the right, go up over the curve and just to the right, hit enter we have a nice maximum of negative one four, so I'm going to put here a max of negative one four, and then we're going to put our min in. So go back to the top function, so second top, choose minimum, three, and so you want to scroll to the left of that minimum, hit enter, scroll to the right of the minimum, hit enter, and enter at the right. And we get another interesting answer. What's that close to? And what's this? So it's really zero. So again, in, in sometimes if you calculate this minimum, it'll give you a, a different answer. It depends on where you put your cursor. But we can all agree that that's close to zero. Actually, that's zero, zero. No. Oh, that's one zero. I can actually see it. We can all agree that that's about where it's at. All right, so now we're ready to actually plot those points. So I would plot your straight line first. Your line goes to negative two zero and two zero. And then your curve, you can start plotting all those intersections. And so that's about what it looks like. So then flip it to the back. Now, 15 and 16 um, algebraically determine the equation of line that passes through the two points. So they give you y equals mx plus b and the slope. I personally would be using point slope form. I would be using y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. One of the most useful forms of a line. Because they're giving you two points here. So I'm going to do number 15 and you'll be left to do number 16 at a later time. So I have to know my slope and I have to know my point. Well, you've been given two points. Well, knowing two points, can't you find the slope? Right, so I have to replace these. So I'm going to find my slope using the slope, slope formula. So m equals, there's my template. I'm going to subtract the y values and subtract the x values. y values go up top, x values go up. So I'm going to label this as x sub 1, y sub 1, x sub 2, y sub 2. So y sub 2 minus y sub 1 is 11 minus 5, and then 3 minus 1. x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So doesn't that give us 6 over 2, which is 3? So that's step 1. Then step two is to use your point slope form. So substitute in for those three values. Y minus, you're going to substitute in 
are y sub 1. So you choose whichever two points. I'm going to choose that one. It doesn't matter. My y sub 1 is 5 equals your slope is 3 parentheses x minus. Instead of x sub 1, I'm going to put in 1. Because I use this point here. So there's my x sub 1 and my y sub 1. So there's my 1 and my 5. And my slope is 3. So now all you have to do is solve for 1. So distribute your 3. y minus 5 equals 3x minus 3. And then we'll it. Add the 5. So you end up with y equals 3x plus 2. Then I would like you to write down the following directions for linear regression for the final problems. There are six. Well, write these down. And we may or may not get to this today, but I at least want you to write down the directions and then you can play with it a little bit over the weekend and I can answer questions tomorrow. But you're going to click on the stat button, which you'll find the stat button on your calculator. You will enter to choose number one. You'll enter the X values in L1 and the Y values in L2. Then you'll turn your stats plots on and I give you information for how to do that. You'll define your data range. And uh, that range that I gave you specific to question number 18. One more piece of direction on the back of this sheet of paper, but we'll do that in a minute. We might not get to that today. For step three, the subscript uh, x min, x max, x scl for scale, and then min, max, and then scale. And when you get into your copy, you'll see that that's what they use. Now I'm choosing those values for step number three, specific to question 18. So when you look at question 18, you'll see that the data goes out to those values and you'll see why I'm choosing them. So when you do other questions, you're going to have to change those numbers. Otherwise, you won't be able to read your graph. And I will give you the final uh, step, which is how to find a linear model uh, sometime next week, whether it's Monday or Tuesday, whatever day it might be. Uh, but for right now, before you pack up, I want you to uh, prepare your calculator for the next class. So you want to hit your second function key, hit plus, then seven, then one, two. You're resetting it 
the calculator, you're clearing out all the data that you just put in there and you're getting it prepped for the next class. And then turn it off and your ticket out the door is my calculator.